Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. It is Saturday, the 28th of July, and today our wonderful lead channel, Jim Charles, is here back with us after a little bit of a short break. So welcome back, Jim. We're so happy that you're back. Thanks. We miss you when you're gone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so just to, uh, just to tell you, we'll start with who's in the room, and then we'll... Uh, do the announcements and then we'll do a blessing and we'll get going. How's that? Very good. Okay, in my room, we've got a big full house today. We have Elisa, Amanda, Christine, Dawn, Ian, uh, Jim, of course, Marlene, Micheline, Michelle, there's a lot of M's there, Pamela, Selesh, Salem, Cheer, Stephanie, Steve, Tarek, uh, and then myself, Karen, and then Jim, who do you have in your room? I have Angela, Barbara, Gar Garrett, Alan, Derek, uh, David, and Ray. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. So just to let everyone know, this is the Saturday Human Colony uh, webinar. You can find out everything about us on hukalo.org. This is a paid webinar, which means that only people that are in part of the Hukalo Club can be here in the Google Room with us, and they can ask all of their questions. We will be monitoring the YouTube, but it's not guaranteed we'll be able to take questions. We'll try, but we've got a pretty full room today. But for $10 a month, you support uh, Human Colony and all of our efforts. You help us pay for our uh, internet costs and support all of the work that we're doing. So. Please, if you want information for that, you can go to hukalo.org and then click on webinars, join webinars. And also coming up on the 16th of April in Dansville, New York for five, August. four nights and five days, we have the third Ascension workshop, which is the whole Hukalo tribe coming together to meet each other, to have classes on galactic Reiki, on channeling, telepathy, and there'll be channelings every day by Jim and Max, and there'll be all kinds of activities. Do you want to say anything about it, Jim? Yeah, you said April. It's August. Oh, oh did I say April? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Scratch that. It's going to be August 16th, just coming up in a few weeks. Yeah, August, August. <laughs> yes. Um, also, I'd like to say that um, it'll be a very – there's going to be a lot of different things on this one. There'll be some things that are similar – some things that are be a lot different, like the um, the galactic channeling will be di different. The galactic um, uh, Reiki will be different because there will be more examples from beings that are going to show their different kinds of Reiki, and that should be interesting. Also, I wanted to say whenever it, this is a paid workshop, the $10 goes to help advance a uh, human colony and Karen's been doing a great deal of work trying to get the site updated and, you know, go, go out and do a little uh, bringing people in, some brainstorming about all kinds of things, about how to make things better. So Thank you. We're, we want everything to be more uh, organized and more consistent. And the site was, as you know, fairly difficult to navigate at times. So we want to make it easier to navigate. We want to make it a more user-friendly system. And we want to make everybody more welcome yeah. here. And um, we love you all. And we, we've had so many comments about how difficult certain things were to find. So now we're going to try to make it a little easier. It's going to take some time. Yeah, well, Don't expect that next week. <laughs> we, hope to, uh, we hope to have that launched uh, by mid-August. So. Hopefully. Yes. Oh, yeah. really? That, yeah. That's okay. I'm almost ready. <laughs> so, okay. Very good. Yeah. Um, just also so you know, if you if you do go to hukalo.org, on the front page, there is a list of all the upcoming webinars and the guests that are coming. We're already booked through the end of August, uh, and then September and October we'll have, but we have a lot of nice, exciting guests coming on. Um, oh, tell them. Well who, huh? Tell, tell them a couple guests. Uh, next week, we have a woman named Terry Rainier. She is from North Carolina, but she's uh, lived all over the place. And she, uh, she channels what's called the divine realm. And her, her work, she works very specifically with systems and how to use systems in a very beautiful and spiritual way so that they align with 
um, her, you know, the core values that we all propose of, of living in a better world. And she will talk a lot about how to walk in your life and be in alignment with, with everything that you're doing, whether it's your job or, or, you know, just your everyday life. And she's a brilliant person. She came out of the business world and she had such an awakening and, and she started getting information from a group called the divine realm. And, and they, she channeled for me in India and, uh, She's just a lovely, lovely person. And then at We Have You uh, the week after, and then after that we have a live event from Dansville from the uh, Ascension Workshop, which will be exciting. And then the, the last week of August, we have Susie Byler. She channels, uh, she channels Prime Creator. So she'll be on. And then in, coming in September, we will have Ruben Langdon. The date is not exactly set. Um, he is, if you know, if watch a lot of YouTube, he has interview with an ED and he's interviewed just a lot of people, everyone from Bashar um, to all kinds of people. He was also the person who did the Citizens Disclosure Project. He was the filmmaker. So he really approaches everything from a documentary standpoint and he just brings the information. He was also the stunt double for the main character in the movie Avatar. He's a Hollywood actor and stuntman. So he's a really, really wonderful guy. Um, so that we have a lot of nice things coming up. And also Thank on you. Friday nights, if you'd like to join, we have the Human Colony uh, Channeling Practice Group. We actually have a club on Facebook called uh, Hukolo Channeling Practice Group. You can join that, just send, send a request. And on Friday nights or Friday afternoons, for depending on where you are in the world, if you want to work on your channeling skills, then you're welcome. And, and that's free for everyone who wants to to join. So okay, thank yeah. you very much. And Kevin Moore is coming too. Kevin Moore will be on in around October. Yeah, I'm and looking for all, all kinds of different people. Lon Miley Duquette is coming. We've got a lot of nice people coming on. So. A lot of really great people coming on. Karen's doing a great job of getting people that are really wonderful to speak on the webinar. So that's, Thank you. I'm very excited about that. That's Thank you. Joy. And it's helping humanity expand. So yes, we are the human colony, right? Yep. <laughs> we are them. We are they. So, all right. Okay. Anybody who have a blessing to start with? You know me. Uh, Barbara has one. Okay, Barbara. Anybody else? Anybody in the YouTube or the Google room? Oops, sorry. <clears throat> Who's that? Anybody? Can All right. Have, okay. Go ahead, Barbara. Go ahead, Barbara. Tokoshi and Nakashio ko natia nuko nayara watia toko ko watako shuota niata tako shuo kanya to watakia ko tokia ko wakia ko to wata. May God be a part of your group and smile down upon you, bring you great blessings and wonders. For this is a time of greatness and a time of rising up. So let it be, and so we will help in any way that we can to energize the population. Thank you. Anyone okay. else? Hmm. Oh, Angie will do one. Uh, anybody else out there? Okay. Karen, are you going to do one? Am I? Sure. Okay, I'm going to have Angie and then you can do one. I'll do one we can all do together, maybe. Um, it's a mantra. It's the peace mantra, and it means may all beings of the world find peace. And it's, uh, it's, it's very easy. It's four words. It's loka. Samasta, Sukino, Pavantu. So you can just join with me, and we'll 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 end with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, which also means peace, peace, peace. So we'll do that together. Okay. Go ahead. We'll start with an Om for everyone together. Om. Loka. Samasta Sukino Bhavantu 
Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu Then three Shantis Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll have uh, Angie do the final one here. May you bring all positive things into your view and into your likeness as a being. May it shine through you and be the example to those around you. May it always be a great happiness and joy within you to share your love of God and love of life. Thank you. Very good. Yes. So uh, before we started, we had some requests. Uh, should I go okay. back over those or? If you would like, yes. Okay. We had requests for a dragon, Neil Armstrong, Odin or Vishnu, King Edward III, Archangel Michael, and then uh, Micheline asked specifically, she wants to know about implants and how to remove them. And someone had requested Elijah, and he's actually coming. So Okay, and Amanda had said she's feeling Takur around, so she's maybe hoping. Oh, okay, it's, it's, yes, Takur is always here on, on the Saturday morning. <laughs> Just <laughs> okay. in case. Just in case. Yeah, awesome. Okay, give me a moment, and I'm going to do a meditation, and I'll be right back. I know Elijah will speak first, and then I don't know who will be coming next. Okay. All right, hold on. Greetings, I am Elijah. Welcome, Elijah. I know that many times I have spoken about unconditional love, but I think that it needs some defining because some people do not see it correctly. Unconditional love is actually an action and not just sitting around loving everybody from your household. That is not the true meaning of the word. Unconditional love is showing that you care to everyone, even those that may not know who you are. Now, you'll say, I cannot do that. There's no way for us to show that we care to everybody in the world. But your light does show that, and your heart does show that. The meaning of who you are shows it, but it is more of an action. Let me describe what I mean. There are those people that you run into into the world, in the world, that you show kindness to, but they may need something more. If you have unconditional love and are attached to the word of God and to the light of God, he will tell you what you must say and do for them. Now, you will not have that with every person. But there are actions that must be taken with some people that you meet. 
there are some things that have to be said to some people out there to show them that God is with you. Maybe hello is just not enough. Maybe you need to say, may God be with you. Maybe you need to say, is there something I can help you with? Because sometimes there are things that you can help with that may only take a few moments and not financially and not uh, with a great amount of effort. But if there's someone that needs something and you ask and they even say, no, that's okay, I'm fine, at least they know that you have extended a word of helpfulness. Now, the very thought that the word of helpfulness could cause any change is amazing. Remember, you may change their whole day. You may change how they are thinking. You may change them in, in some form of thought process because it is that you have inquired there was a reason for you to ask that question to them. There was a reason for you to feel that leading of God. Now, it is not always going to be that question. It is not always going to be, may I help you with something? But you may just say, may God be with you. Have a good day. Have a nice day. Whatever it is that comes to you. But Remember, unconditional love is that you see the actual light of God within the people that you meet. You actually find it. You actually know it's there because everyone was born with it. God created everyone with his fire within them. So you know absolutely that it's there. And if you cannot find it, then there's something wrong there, isn't there? That means they're covering it over. That means there's something wrong. And you should ask God immediately what you should say to them, if anything. Now, you see, that is an action, asking God for help with your unconditional love. Action with unconditional love. It is not just sitting in a room and saying, I love everybody. It's not just a going out and shining your light, which is a beautiful thing. That is an action also. But sometimes it requires interaction. But you will know with God's help when that is. Remember, you needed help at one time as well. Did anyone come to your rescue? Did anyone say anything that helped you along? Think of those kinds of things. Think of the people that came to you when you needed it, that God sent to you, and be one of those people. Perhaps some of you will say, well, no one came to me. No one said anything to me. No one was there for me. But perhaps that was the lesson. You are not going to be the same. You will actually help others. If your mission, if you have a mission, any mission is helping others. Any mission is furthering the word and the actions of God. Any mission is to bring light to the world that is positive. If you have a mission, it will end up helping someone. So think about that. If you're saying, well, I don't know what my mission is. We've talked about that before. Your mission is to find your highest excitement first. And then fill yourself with God and forgive yourself and become the greatest person you can be because you must fill yourself with love to love another 
you must fill yourself with forgiveness to forgive another. So forgive yourself, love yourself, and call on God to bring in what he wants from you. I know there are many people sitting out there going, I have no idea what he wants from me, but you really haven't asked, have you? Or you really haven't thought or studied about what you really want to do, what excites you, what makes you want to, to talk, what makes you want to communicate with others. What do you want to talk about? Is it cars? You say, well, how can cars be a mission? You can make a mission out of any interest. You can make a mission out of any understanding. Because as you're talking about cars, isn't it wonderful that man has been brought along this far to create this kind of technologies? Is it computer games? Well, some people say, well, you can't really uh, talk about computer games because computer games are just one-on-one. -on -one. You, But you can share what you've discovered in them. Maybe God is saying you're to develop a game that will help the world to understand the ascension. There are so many ways to help and so many ways you can build a mission. Do not rule anything out because God has his hand on the entire world. Do not rule out what you do to be a mission because it can end up that way. And you can end up sharing unconditional love no matter what you do, no matter where you are. Unless you live in a cave alone with no means of communication. I don't see any of those people out there that are, that are actually trying to communicate with the world and be part of the world. I just see that so many are just wasting time being alone and trying to find themselves but they're really not searching in the right places. Do you read? Oh, I don't like to read. Do you look at the internet? Well, I don't really like to do that. Well, what is it that you like to do? Do you pray? Tell me you don't like to pray, but you must do it anyway. There are things out there that you don't like to do that you must do. So in order to maybe find some of your missions, you might have to look for them. You might have to understand that they may not be apparent to you, but God will teach you and lead you and help you. Now, Many of you, well, not many, I should say, there are some of you that continually tell people what you're doing in your missions. That is fine and beautiful. As long as you are doing your missions, it is wonderful to spread that word. Perhaps it will inspire someone to take on a mission as well. But remember to keep it in a humbleness in some ways. You don't want to seem haughty. You don't want to seem like I'm better than you because I have this mission. Because it might actually cause people to turn away from you and turn away from some of the information that they may need. So approach your mission with great humility. For that is part of what God wants from you. To bring information but not to say look at me he wants you to say look at god he wants you to say look at them how they're working look at how great these this uh, particular mission is going lift one another up
and then you won't have to lift yourself up because you will be lifted higher than ever with the help of those around you that love you that understand that you have a mission that are guided in God's directions remember it is an important age Jesus will return some will come that you may not expect to speak great things to the human race maybe you are one of those people I do not know but be with God listen to his words study who he is and if if there's parts of these religious books that do not resonate with you there's a reason for that because man put some things into these spiritual books that do not belong there and you will resonate with that but there is some wonderful things there that God did put in God does have his hand on it but he will say all right you read that but you didn't get anything out of it because man put that in and it wasn't for you but there will be things that will inspire and uplift you and make you think and those are the things that God has resonated for you but you have to seek having a mission is not a lazy business having a mission is not sitting around and just hoping that something will come to you having a mission is action the same as unconditional love action the same as anything that has a good outcome there's actions first you prepare you understand and you go out and you do you prepare you understand you go out and you do this is the way that the mission has to begin you have to prepare yourself first then that's beautiful i think we found the title of our webinar today that was a beautiful thing very well but that is all I have to say, unless there is any questions for me. I don't know if there's any questions in your room um, or in the Google room. No one has said, but we do have a couple in the in the YouTube chat, and they're and they're quite good questions. So if very you're good. Going. Um, Pete uh, asks a very nice question. He says, "I I send love and blessings and all the gifts of consciousness I have to share to people around me and to strangers. How does that affect them?" It affects them because that is an action. You are, you have prepared yourself with healing and understand that healing is part of who you are. And you're sending that healing out into the world. That healing helps the entire world in one way or another. You understand that you live in the karma of the whole world. All the human beings that live in this world have karma which means a good or a, a negative or a mediocre kind of sensation of who they are and it's it's sent out into the world their energy is sent into the atmosphere all of you have an energy that is sent out your positive karma your positive healing affects that karma around those that you send it to and those that are uh, needing healing now remember this is an action that is part of who you are is there more to your mission perhaps there is but is this a great beginning to a great mission absolutely what other questions are there <coughs> there's a question from Udi Yaman Shukla uh, he has this question specifically for uh, for you. And after that, Michelle, you ask your question. Um, 
Elijah, she says, what is the status on the major missions that seem to have been delayed for several months? Can they be expected to start in the near future? The delays are making some people restless. Delays are a lesson in patience. Whenever there is a delay on anything, it means that there's something that needs to be prepared. Do not stop looking at what you are to do. Some delays in missions mean that there is more preparation needed, that you're not quite ready. But other delays mean that um, you need to stop and look around at everyone else around you. What is it? Where? Uh, what are these people doing that are around you? What is uh, coming into your realm that needs to be dealt with? Also, you should be sending out your enlightenment, your energy, your love in these situations, and your mission is not stopped. Your mission is still going on in the activity of love, acceptance, example. You are not delayed in that ever. So remember that you are still a, a light, an example. And if you let the, the, forward movement stop then that is not has anything to do with the mission but it has something to do with you being discouraged about what's happening around you or something happening within you remember those people that are getting down what is wrong there's something wrong within themselves it's not that their mission is stopped it is that they have found something that stopped them. They have found something to stop them. It may be an excuse not to do certain things. Look around you. Is there something that you need to do that you haven't done? Look around you. Is there someone hurting that you haven't reached out to? Look around. Is there a family member you need to touch or say something to you? Is there an un forgiveness somewhere remember when it seems like your mission has stopped there is a reason for it and you must search you don't just wait and twiddle your thumbs and wait for the mission to start again that is not how it's done it is constant activity constant example constant movement in your spirit if there's a delay study learn more become even greater at what it is that you are to do but there is no such thing as a true delay because you should always be active is there another question have we lost you Michelle. Hi, Elijah. Hi. Thanks for being here. Greetings. I, I just have a question. Um, hi. <laughs> every every day, I wrap the planet in my gold light, and um, my intention is for peace on Earth. And I I just want to get a gauge on how effective that is. I I send um, love and light. Well in many places, but uh, specifically to the Middle East. And um, how, how much of a difference am I making? You, my dear, are a special light. You have a great deal of energy that you send out. And this is a beautiful thing, for it affects many people in many places. Remember, all humans are attached by their souls, one to another. And all people are attached by their karma as well. You are sending it to those that are needing and looking for hope and for love, understanding and light. These people are encouraged by what you do. And the gold is the magic that brings this together for you. Now understand this. There are those that will reject what you do, but do not look down on them for they are all children of god but pray for those also that are 
dark and are brooding. And I know that you already do that. I can see that right now. But I just want you to be even more empowered as you do these actions. Make sure that when you are doing these actions for the world, that your family is not left out in any way. And I don't think they are. But I'm saying that for other people's benefits. Because there are some people that are active in giving of themselves to the world, but everyone around them do, doesn't get anything from them. You must be balanced in all that you do. Remember that, people. Balance yourself with your mission and with all the things that you do. You must balance it so that your joy is full and your blessing will return. Of course it will. But remember to keep all things in perspective. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Um, does Elisa, go ahead and ask your question. Thanks, Don. Hello. Um, thank you. Um, I'd like to ask a question about health, if that's okay. Um, yes. Actually, Michelle, who's just spoke to you, has been helping me with her healing light, which is yeah. really wonderful. Um, what I find is I have quite big emotional changes and I feel really ready to heal after a very long illness. But the physical changes just don't happen. So am I doing something wrong or hanging on to the illness? Just... There are a reason for physical ailments in human beings. Sometimes it's to keep them down so that they will study and learn and pray. Sometimes physical ailments are to, for you to get through and show your joy so others can be inspired by who you are as a strong individual, even though that you are not well. But healing is possible still but it may come slowly because it may be something that is you have to learn to find joy in because no matter what situation you are in the earth, you must find joy in yourself in that situation. Now you may say, there are some situations with this pain and with this ailment or with this, I'm, I'm sick in my stomach and many of these things that, that do not contribute to the joy of the being. However, when you are in those situations, you reach out to God and say, help me. I am only human. Bring your strength to me so that I may be uplifted. And he will pull you out. Believe me, many have done this and it has happened. There are some in this room that have had this situation that God has pulled them out. It wasn't easy, and it didn't happen fast sometimes. But God is faithful, and he will do it. But you, with what I see in you is this. You have people around you that you need to show them how strong you are, how beautiful you are, and the example of who you are in love and kindness. And this illness is just temporary for now, but you can tell them, even though I don't feel well, I love God. God has helped me, brought my spirits up, connected me with people that are sending me with healing energy, and they will see your faith, and it will increase all those around you in faith, in love in perseverance toward the right things. Thank you Thank for you. your love. Thank you. You are welcome. I see that you understand fully what I'm talking about. Yes, it's just about appreciation, I guess. Yes, you are appreciated as well. Thank you. Thank you, I much love to you, Lisa. She will get better, by the way. That's beautiful. 
Um, there is a question uh, from another one from Peter. He's asking really good questions today, so let's keep it going. He said, uh, can you explain the difference between the feminine Christ and the masculine Christ? I always understood that Christ's consciousness is the perfect balance between the two. He understood that he had masculine and feminine in him, otherwise he could not have created male and female. He created male and female so that they would uh, uh, procreate and create greater populations. However, at first, he did not understand it himself. He was pure energy, pure love, pure and not in a sentient body that he had created. He learned how to create light and matter and things of this nature. But he did not understand it at first. But let me tell you this. There was a time when he went into humanity, into the aliens, into all those that existed and experienced what he needed to experience through their actions and could understand then the male and female that is part of him. And yes, there is the great male and female part of him. And uh, I'm not sure if I answered that the way you wanted me to, but I do see that um, he understands his male and female parts as well. We, but you have to understand, God is pure energy of many many kinds and that energy has learned to create it always always existed and it always had sentience but there came a point where there was a great aloneness and so he had to prepare the universe for his enjoyment for his delight and for your delight as well Thank you. Is there any other questions in uh, in your room? Are there any questions in your room? Any questions here? Any questions? No. Then we shall move on, and I will leave you for now. Thank you very much. Much love, Elijah. It has been a pleasure to speak to you, and I hope that I have answered your questions yes. properly. Thank you very much from the YouTube chat. Greetings. I am Takur. Hi, Takur. I just came for a very short period to answer questions about if anyone had any. And so I know usually they have many questions about what's happening around the world. And it is very much the same as it was last time I spoke. But uh, the Grand Solar Minimum is still working very uh, diligently to... Uh, cause havoc on the planet. Mother Gaia is purging and also releasing many of, of the energies that have not been on the earth for a long time. And it is a very amazing period in your history. Are there any questions? Yes, sure is a question. And then I, then Micheline. Yes. Greetings, Dekir. How are you? I am very well. <laughs> he him like he's a diet of war. Um, my mother asks if you can do a scan on her eyes and also send her healings and maybe give your opinion about uh, our health situation regarding the eyes. Very well. We have done a few scans on her, but nothing um, very recent. It, it's been a couple weeks now. So, but we will do another with her and... I will report back to you when we speak. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Yes. Yes. Hi, to Curtis Micheline. Hi, Micheline. 
Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. Good. I, I've come aware, or I've become aware that implants might be a problem for myself. And I'm wondering, could you scan me? Could you, because it's, it's, um, it's becoming a real problem. I see. One moment, please. I will have them do that. You will have to be sitting very still, however. Uh, that will come in a few minutes, and I will let you All know right. when the scan is ready. Thank you so much. Is there any other questions in the meantime? They have to prepare the technology for that. Michelle, uh, uh, Amanda has a question. Or oh, go ahead, Michelle. No, I was just wondering this might also be something that is troubling my son. Yes. Uh, is it possible that he is nearby? He is nearby. He's on his phone and sitting. So, uh, If it's possible, we will do a scan on him as well. Okay. But um, I cannot yeah. promise that if there's too much movement. Yes, of course. Okay, that, that is all. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. I have a question about uh, with my cat, uh, how he may be doing, um, what's, what's going on with him, and what I can do to help him. We would have to scan him. And that would be something, we're doing several scans right now. So I, I know where your cat is, but we can't get to him immediately. But we will get to him. Yes. Anyone else? Yes, we have three more questions. Amanda, then Sheer, and then I've got one from the chat. Very good. Amanda. Hello? I do not hear her. Okay, we'll go to Sheer first. I won't let her unmute. Let me see if I can unmute her. All right, very well. One moment. I'm searching you, Amanda, in the, <laughs> the bottom of the screen here. Let me see. I can I can't unmute you. I can only I can only mute you. I can't unmute you. So hello. There you go. Yeah. There she is. Okay. Hello, Tucker. Greetings. Uh, hello. I've recently done some diet changes to help with some issues I'm having with my teeth, and it's been yes. very quickly onset. And I don't know if it's a result of my body compensating for the higher energy. Can you give me any idea of what's going on with that, please? A diet change will always affect the body completely. And so, yes, it may be that it is affecting the body right now. But it appears to me, as I am sensing it, that there is an energy that you're talking about that, uh, that is not related to the diet. There's an energy around you that seems to be more powerful and more consuming you is that correct correct i feel like because what's happening is my teeth are demineralizing like my body's trying to absorb the teeth to compensate for whatever's happening like energy is going out somewhere and i yes. feel like my teeth are the first ones that are really showing signs of it so they are decomposing um, in a way, I mean, they're getting cavities really, really quick. So the body is starting to reabsorb. There is an energy, yes, there is an energy around you that is very strong, that is unusual. So we, right. uh, I will send them uh, to look at that, a, a scan to your room. That's a different kind of technology. So we can scan your area, and I will get back to you with that. Um, okay. Micheline, your uh, scan is ready. But um, let's try not to ask too many personal questions. I'm getting a little overloaded with. I'm sorry. Things. I didn't mean for you to do That's this. Right. I just wanted some. Because I've been I feeling. I think that it's important, though. Your really? health is important. Your health is important. But um, I'm getting a little overwhelmed with the uh, scanning machine here. But um, uh, uh, your answers will come soon. Your scan is done, Micheline. Yes, thank you. I apologize if I'm asking a personal question, but this is, it's, it's yeah, now, it's, it's coming understand. through my dreams and it's, it's, it's really becoming a problem for me to function. 
Yes, and they do see two implants already. So we'll discuss that with you in a little a moment. Are there any other questions? Yes, uh, Shear has a question. Hey, Tigger. Um, I want to ask you about potions and artifacts. Many people speak about magic, but there are other uh, areas of magic that we don't discuss at all. Correct. So can you say that alchemy is a combination of chemistry and applying magic to it? If this is well, the correct notion for it? The L collectives are made by God. They are an offshoot. Alchemy. Of Alchemy. Alchemy. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you said the L community. Ah, uh, no. Alchemy is. Okay. Al Alchemy is trying to change anything into gold, trying to make gold from uh, things that are not made of gold. And uh, it's very rare that that can happen. But. Um, it can happen under the right circumstances and with the right technology. But at this point, I do not think your people are doing much of that. So um, the gold is a very valuable and magical substance, and it has properties that humans do not understand at this point. And you will, know, you will understand that there are very minuscule flecks of gold around the, each human heart. And that is part of the reason why the heart continues to, to work. And the DNA uh, attribute, uh, gives energy to those, that gold, and the gold has its own energy. So, yes, um, alchemy is something that is a lost art in many forms. So, but it is going to be revitalized in the future, I believe. What was your question, really? Did I answer it? Well, I asked about uh, alchemy and about uh, potions. If potion is a combination of chemistry and applying magic to the chemistry and yes. expanding chemistry. Absolutely, yes. It is, um, it is magic because it, they take... Uh, potions are usually natural, are from the earth, meaning that the... Um, they use uh, leaves and plants from the, the planet and for it to be uh, valuable to your people, it must come from your planet. It cannot be leaves and plants from another planet. It must be leaves and plants and things from your planet. And then magic is applied to that and made uh, changing the properties of some of these plants and uh, and the essence of them to be more powerful and useful. So is it possible to gather the ingredients, put them in the right way, and then apply magic at least for beginners? Is it easier than well, performing magic itself? That is a loaded question, and let me tell you why. I do not... I prefer the white magic that is more natural. Uh, I know this kind of potions and magic is very popular in some cultures, or it has been in some cultures, but it, it can be very tricky. So you have to know exactly what you're doing to do this, but yes, that is how it's done. Interesting. And last question, I... I'm studying in the field of uh, water technologies and things are being used like uh, chlorine and stuff like that. Do you think that in the future we could use like a potion substance to replace those dangerous uh, chemical uh, compounds? Is it possible? Absolutely. They will, but they remember it's the acceptance of magic that is the problem. Chem uh, the potions can be used for many, many different things. But many will, uh, many businesses and uh, things will not accept magic for a hundred, two hundred years. <coughs> well, if I can show them results, then things are going much quicker. In they will think that it's a trick. They will think it's a trick at first, but you will be able to prove that scientifically if they choose to put their sciences on it. Okay, thank you very much.
you're welcome. Hi, uh, Tarek has a question. Tarek, can you unmute her? Tarek. Yes. Hello. Greetings. This is a uh, meeting. Check out. This is uh, Sultan Tarek. Uh, I am in the top of the Borjing Gulf uh, region. And now we have a very difficult uh, time with the earth. There is an earthquake and uh, high temperatures and dry uh, rivers in our regions. I always yeah. work uh, to fix these things and the blessings, but now there is a difficult time. Yes, it is difficult to show your love of God when everything around you is falling apart. However, this may be a test for you. And there are other areas of the world that are suffering as well. Um, we will try to get to your area. There are ships all around the planet. Ours is in the United States area, but there are ships in your areas as well. We will try to see what we can do to help the uh, climate change a little bit, to try to develop some clouds in the area, etc. But yes, there are many weather problems around the planet and many earthquakes at this time and volcanoes. It is one of the most tumultuous times on Earth that you can imagine, and it's not done yet. We will uh, try to get you some help if we can. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Um, there's, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Sorry, there's a question from the chat uh, from Shanman. He says uh, uh, that uh, he said the traffic in the air, basically, I think with the ships, is getting much thicker. Can you elaborate on that? Do you mean the alien traffic? Yes. Yes, uh, there are many uh, species around the planet. The reason for that is that this is the time, A, of your ascension. B, you have come to your uh, fruition as a hybrid species, and your DNA is very valuable. They're doing everything in their, in their uh, energies to keep you from being harvested by negative beings because your DNA is so useful to the galaxy. We are asking for donations and things of that nature, which is the only proper way to do it, to help the galaxy. However, there will be those that would want to attack and take some of the population and use their DNA. However, do not be frightened. That's not going to happen. Um, there are too many uh, protectors out there and it just won't do. It's just not going to happen. However, there are very many reasons why there are people and species around your planet. They want to observe your ascension period. They want to observe um, uh, the kind of people that, is, that are there. They want to observe this time period also because it is tumultuous. And there are so many prophecies in the galaxy, universe, and even on your planet about this time period. And so they are very much um, trying to observe what is happening. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's, there's a couple of questions in the chat, um, and one that's going to combine with Shear's question, but let me get to the chat questions first. Uh, Tracy said she put in an application to visit the colonies and receive assistance in channeling. Has this been done? She wants to know? Yes. Uh, anyone that puts in um, a uh, request, we will come to them while they are sleeping. And they will say yes or no whether they want to come with us to the colonies. We have someone that assists them astrally to the, to the colonies. Now, many people do not remember going. <laughs> there are some people now that are much more um, able to remember. I'm starting to get reports that more people are remembering, but there are still those that do not remember a thing from coming to the colonies. But um, in time, as you become more exposed 
to the fourth dimensional energies and it goes back into the third dimensional body that it will it's going to start to help you remember because the subconscious will start to release some information into the consciousness at some point okay thank you for that uh, tanya has a question she says that's a nice question she says um how can we deal with missed things in our lives the things we should have done but we didn't is there a cure for that sorrow regrets yes remember this there is a reason why everything does happen or does not happen there sometimes a regret is to help you to not miss the next big thing and you would have missed it without a regret in the past and also the things that you regret may have many positive lessons for you to learn but remember there are other people probably involved in this lesson and they must rise to the occasion and understand that everyone is human and that things are what they are for a reason. Now, many humans do not get that so far, but they're starting to understand that there are some that are starting to understand that regrets can be a learning situation. Thank you for that. Um, then there's just one more question and <laughs> 24 Daylight wants to know, when will society fall? Now, that is a, a <laughs> huge question. Yeah. And no one knows exactly when that will happen, because if you did, um, you would be running for the hills. But when society falls, you have to be part of it. So no one can tell you when that will be. But it will not be... It will not be within the next few years, I can tell you that, but it is coming. The implosion of the financial systems is inevitable. So your, your countries, all, many of your countries, in fact, I believe all, every single country is in debt. And how can every single country get out of debt when they are all in debt to some degree? So it will implode eventually. Okay, thank you. There is a question in the room. Yes. Speak loudly. I question. Speak. Barbara. Speak. I, heard, I read something about Yellowstone has a big fissure in it that opened up to 100 feet wide. Yes. Is there any, can you give a little information on why it happened, what's happening with Yellowstone? Oh, well, Yellowstone, she, did you hear the question? Did you hear the question? No, no, we couldn't hear the question. Uh, would you ask the question very loudly into the... I asked to occur about Yellowstone, which opened up a fissure just recently that's 100 feet wide. And I want to know what's going to happen or what is if she can give us any information on that. Um, I need to say something about that. That is not true. There, that, is a, that is a fake news story that's been circulating since 2012, and it's absolutely not true. That's not true. No, no, not, not true. true. Okay. But I do have another question. Yes. There, um, just recently, I felt like I was in two different missions, uh, like in the Earth. I can't think of this one, like dimension and another dimension. Can you, do you feel anything what's going on with that? I felt like I was here, I was up there. You have friends that are in other dimensions. The question was she felt like she was in more than one dimension at the same time. And, um, or she was going back and forth. She does have friends that are in fourth and fifth dimension. And so sometimes when she communicates with them, they uh, bring her into their field to some extent, but not completely into their dimensional density. So it is that you are teetering in between. Yes. Okay, thank you. Now, I do want to say something about Yellowstone National Park. And that is that it is a very uh, dangerous place. It has quite a bit of volcanic uh, activity under the earth uh, there. And there are some geysers going off that haven't gone off for quite a while. 
and um, they they are having unusual activity there. But a fissure did not open up. Thank you. Um, there is also a question from Sheer. He's back again. <laughs> yes. Sheer. Okay, there's a question, and we'll come back to him. There's a question in the chat about the effects of the uh, of the um, eclipse yesterday, and then Sheer had also a question regarding the eclipse. The effects of it on what? Uh, there's effects on it in all all kinds of places. Um, they didn't it, expect remember, any time there is an eclipse, there's different kinds of energies released on the planet and since a lot of the planets are on this side of the sun at this time it also has some special meaning as well the energies are very much stronger than they would normally be but they are similar to any other eclipses energy except that in this particular case they are they're more able to be used for healing and for uh, different positive reasons or modalities. Okay. Sheer, are you yes. back? Go ahead, Sheer. And then Micheline's after Sheer. Uh, Tukur, I want to ask about the full moon yesterday. I know that many times that there is a blood moon, it affects Israel. Uh, the last couple of times in 67 and 48, there were wars in Israel, and now, you know, things are also kind of, uh, there's a lot of tension in some uh, areas. Yes, there is very high possibilities for uh, negative activities in the Middle East. Uh, higher positive activities to other places in the earth, but for the Middle East, it's, it's a it's a very scary time because they put a lot of uh, emphasis on the blood moons and a lot of uh, the people there practice some negative uh, magic and some negative uh, pray praying with the, the blood moon. Within Israel or within the nearby uh, countries? The entire Middle East. Ooh, okay. And since it's already happened, can you see what is going on? If how things are well, going to be there seems out? to be a, a great calm, and that's a little frightening a calm before the storm, perhaps. But we do not see any, I cannot get in touch with anyone that will give me any information about what's happening in the higher portions of government. Grindel, even Grindel, doesn't know exactly what's happening at the highest levels. Mm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Micheline has a question. Micheline. Yes, hello. Um, this is about astral projections. Uh, I know some of us are taking part in the governmental talks when, when they happen. And yes. what do we look like to the leaders? I mean, do we have our own shapes and faces and as such? Of course. You look you like, like the perfect... Uh, your astral bodies are perfect. Um, they have, they ha have the original blueprint of the body. And so you are perfect when you appear to the government. You Do look, we... Yes. I'm just wondering about, is it also, um, do we appear as our age now? You appear as a perfect rendering of your age, of course. There will be no wrinkles, there will be no flaws, there will be no blemishes. It will be just the perfect but you must understand, they don't see you fully in the astral either. You are sort of a ghost-like figure. So they do see you in your perfection, but they, they really can't see you like you were in third dimension. It is an astral projection. It's an astral body, so they see that. But you look perfect. 
Um, could they recognize me if they were to see me now, if I were to see them at a function, let's say? They might be able to, but that would be difficult because they only saw you in a ghost-like appearance. They never saw what you looked like in third dimension. So your perfect body would not actually be exactly the same. Now that you are older and have lived, you you have changed your uh, from what your astral body looks like. And do we introduce ourselves to them? Some of you do and some of you do not. Some just use first names. Some and introduce themselves with full names because they want them to know who they are. Hmm. That is your prerogative and each one is individual in deciding what they are to do. Some give no name at all. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. That was my question. Thank you. And by the way, they are, there is two implants and they will be removed. Thank you are, very, are you very right? much. Your son has also been scammed and he is fine. There might be one implant, but they're still checking. It may be in the thalamus area. Okay. All right. I, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Well, his was a little blurry. He was moving a little bit, so it's harder to see. So we're going to uh, do the amplification and magnification and see what happens. Again, I, I'm so grateful. There are, are no welcome. words. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Good day. Thank you. I don't see any other questions. Very well. Well, there's a question right here. You I, have to speak up. I still didn't see that one. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. The question was, am I going to be at the workshop? And the answer is yes. The one that's powerful right now. Yes. Yes, I will be there. You teach Reiki, don't you? We will teach the Lyran portion of the Reiki, correct. Thank you. Okay. So, is there some, any more questions or should I go? Well, you can stay as long as you wish, but there are no more questions. I will leave then and leave some, let someone else. Oh, I, oh I, there is a question. Actually, I, I, before you, there is one question from the chat. It's from Lana. Yes. When she says, greetings to Kerr, do you love your planet as much as we love Earth? How do you express that? Yes, we love our planet because we actually created it. We, it's an artificial planet, and we love it. Um, but, yes, we love it probably even more than you love your Earth because we did make it ourselves. But your planet is much more beautiful in some ways because it has more plants and animals. We are still working on developing more plant life and animal life around it, or on it, I should say. But it... It is a wonderful place, and I enjoy being there. I haven't been there for a couple years now, but I will be going back on vacation at some time in the near future. Okay, thank you so very much for that. And and now there are no more questions. Wait. I think you misunderstood me. I'm talking about today. Later today, after you leave here. After I leave here today, where am I going? To the workshop about an hour from here. Oh, you mean to... Yes. To cry on. Yes. Um, yes, I enjoy cry on. Cry on is an hour from where they are here today. And so, yes, I will drop in on that as well. Thank you for that. Okay. I think there's no more questions. <laughs> All right. Very well. I will bring uh, someone else through. Thank you. One moment, please. Much love to you. Much love to you me. That's
Yeah, you didn't ask for me, but I came anyway. Well, this welcome. Ah. Is... Uh, 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 some people know who that is, but is um. Hmm. Who is this? I'm Fog. Oh, Fog. I'm a, Thank you. I'm a Kior. Welcome. I I've just come to say that I'm I'm fascinated with your people. I'm actually from a member of Ashtar Command, but um, I like the way that um, some of you think and some of you deal with your interesting lives. But I do want to say, this is a time uh, that Elijah mentioned action earlier, and it was a very important message for me because there are some days where I don't feel very active and I don't feel very much like a part of anything. But I am always scanning and uh, checking on the planet and certain peoples on it. So therefore, I am active. It just doesn't seem very important to me. But even though you may seem like it's not an important job or that your mission's not important, it is. What I do is important, even though it may not seem so. But I wanted to say that there are so many alliances out here that are really... in. Uh, supporting the ascension process and that they are really uh, trying to help humanity as much as possible as much as they are allowed to help but there are many things we are not allowed to do of course so I just wanted to give you that upbeat note that there are many people out here trying to help in as many ways as possible so if you understand that I'm glad um, my, my understanding of technology is pretty good. So if you have any questions about alien technology or things of that nature, let me know and I can come to your sessions and talk to you about that. But um, at this point, I just wanted to say hello and, and then I will be off. Is, do, is there any questions? At this moment, I don't see any questions. Very good. Yeah. I just was, I popped in. I, I think perhaps I may be unwelcome, but um, <laughs> no, thank you. You know, they there is one question fun. maybe you can address that someone asked. They said, <laughs> it's, it's a common comment, but I will turn it into a question. Um, Voscom says, I wonder why none of these great or good guys, meaning you and Takur, are never allowed quote unquote to help well we can help in the ways they are allowed we are allowed to help with the weather and we are allowed to help with volcanoes and earthquakes and things like that because they're not man-made you as a species must take care of yourself as far as government as far as uh, many many things are concerned we are not allowed to interact with how you deal with your everyday lives we're even allowed to help with some forms of healing if it's in the fourth dimension as long as we don't ap appear in the third dimension but we're not allowed to help you survive if it's something man-made if you create a bomb that destroys your planet we're, or part of your planet, we're not allowed to help with that because you did that to yourself. Now, weather, earthquakes, volcanoes, you're not, you're not in control of those things. You're not doing that to yourself. So we're allowed to help with that. But if it comes to technology or, uh, or government or decisions being made uh, that are harmful to the planet. We are not allowed to step in on that because it's your planet, not ours. It's your decisions, uh, not ours. And I know that some of your people say, yes, but the people are not the governments necessarily. But yet, you elected these leaders, you chose these leaders, they're deciding for you the outcome of the planet. And so therefore, as leaders, their outcomes, their decisions become your decisions. 
and I know that it may not be fair, but it is what it is, and so we have to abide by that according to uh, galactic law. So if you are doing something to harm yourselves, we're not allowed to step in and stop it. We have to go with it because you created it. You are part of it. Your government is, is uh, saying this is the way that we have decided to go. And so you, you cannot have our help with that because that is not what we are here to do. The last thing we want to do is find a planet to to run the whole planet and we don't want to do that anyway so but we would like to help in any way we can we can give counsel of course uh, uh, because your governments have allowed us to show up at meetings so and they don't always listen to what we have to say i don't think but i think that the very fact that they allowed us to be there is a very positive thing at this point I don't know when the next one will be because it was a long time from the last one. And usually they happen three times a year, but it, it's not looking that way anymore. So that is how it, that has to be. Okay. Well, I guess. No, well, I'm going to do one more for you. Eric has a question if you don't want to. All right, very well. Yes, hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, we have a problem with the weather. How can we help us with the industry? Well, and we are in the top of Persian Gulf. Oh, know, the Persian Iraq. Gulf. Oh, yeah, that's the wrong side. You've had some earthquakes recently, haven't you? Yes, yes. And they... we have uh, 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 dry uh, rivers and uh, high temperatures. And yes. tectonics, uh, I think, have a problem. It seem like the right yes, um, number. It's too short. Well, Ashtar Command is looking at that as well as uh, several other different al alliances. Oh, the thing is, uh, we don't have your, your planet. There are certain governments that have weather control, and they've really messed up on them in some ways. And um, yes, even though you're going through some global, what they call global warming, and actually the beginning of an ice age, perhaps, there are other uh, groups of people that are trying to control the weather, and they're not doing a very good job of it. So. Uh, some of the things that we will have to do, we'll have to reverse some of those things that they have done. So there, there are many alliances out here that are aware of it. Uh, we're not sure how far we can go because uh, your governments have created some of this weather. The weather that they did not create, we're allowed to work with, but there's some weathers that they did create, and the galactic government is uh, it is trying to tell us that it's a question mark whether we can help with that or not. So, uh, because you did it to yourself, so we are working with uh, uh, several other alliances to uh, see if we can help with that. <laughs> can I ask a question? Sure. Um. Hi. Uh JD has a question. Yes. Hello. Greetings. Uh, I was flying here to the Netherlands from Sweden, and I saw from the sky, you know, it's a it's a lot of a dry season uh, over Europe now, and there's a lot of fires going on in Sweden. So I was just playing with my 3D mind about some ideas how to create some water uh, for Sweden, and is there some technology that uh, maybe we can develop uh, in terms of oh, using, absolutely. using the we water we have on the ground to sort of vaporize it to create clouds. Um, yes, your people have weather control devices that can create clouds. They know how to do it. They seed the clouds with certain chemicals. It's not always safe, but they know how to do it. But uh, they've they've been holding back lately because they've botched some of the weather in some places and they don't know how to fix it 
So it is that, um, yes, they, they do know how to do that. And I will, um, like I said, we're working with many alliances to fix some of these areas. But um, your governments do have weather control machines. Hello? Because they seem to be struggling with putting out the fires and we are like uh, getting patrols from uh, different countries in Europe, getting their help. I mean, if they have the technology, they are just not using it for the uh, for the reasons of not getting out to the public with this technology or what what is the reasons or do you yes, know I any reasons? Know. Actually, I do not know what the reasons are of your governments are stalling on that but there's other fires in other parts of the world that are also in california and in um other parts of the world that have great fires happening at the moment as well so um there i don't understand your political peoples because they seem to be stalling all the time about helping they don't stall when it comes to hurting others sometimes, but sometimes they really stall when it comes to helping. Okay, thank you very much. I am very sorry about that. We would, you know, California is on fire again. If you can drop some water there, it would be really, really Well, nice. we're, we're getting together and to see what we're allowed to do from the galactic governments. They, they're saying that now, some of this weather we're not allowed to work with because it's created by your people. But Griff Fickner has been helping with all the weather in the United States, and there are other, um, Griff Fickner has been helping with weather everywhere, uh, but they, are, uh, they can only do so much. Okay, thank you. And then there's one question from Michelle. She wants to know is if God is AI, and is God ultimately AI technology or consciousness? No. God was here. God is pure energy. Um, he is always existed. Uh, if God were AI energy, he would not have always existed. He would have had to have been created by something. God created different species who created AI. So, um, yes, God is pure energy who, who has learned how to create light and matter and, and all things that exist. But AI is, AI would be a horrible God, really, absolutely. Um, there's also a question from Steve. Um, he's asking, uh, what about, and this is back to the weather, he wants to know, what about helping when man-made tech was alien-influenced? I, I don't know what that means. Um, it, I understand what he's saying. Okay. He's saying that beca because of aliens, they do have that technology. There are those that broke the law of the galactic government and did give information to your peoples that was not permitted. And yes, that is true. Some of the portions of your weather machines, your time machines, things of this nature, was AI given, or not AI given, but alien given. There is a little AI given things here and there, but they do it um, in a very different way than uh, the reptilians and sectoids and those kinds do it. Uh, so yes. Uh, information was given to your people that they should not have. Okay. And Liney has a question. Uh, she says, how technologically advanced um, are they, are, is the Ashar Command um, compared to other alliances? And do they have the same agreements with our world as Gurfik Nir? Yes. We have to follow the same agreements. It's the same law. We have to follow galactic law like everyone else. But we are advanced. We've been around longer than the Gert Vignier okay. as a community, as an alliance. And so some of our technological advances are greater, but they are a very 
positive species, a group of species. And so we do uh, talk to them and uh, we are in alliance with them in some ways, but we have very different ideas how things should be done. Okay, thank you very much. And, and Shira has a question. Yes. Well, I want to ask you about uh, creating matter, but what you just said about you have different opinions of how to approach things than, than they are doing that, that's actually um, more interesting to me, if you can go further into it, like what she, uh, the Asher Command will do if they were instead of the group Fitnir, we are we are we are only interactive if we need to be meaning that if we see an emergency we can be interactive Gurk Fiknir chooses to be active constantly interactive with you the human population where Ashtar command thinks that that is uh too much it's overactivity and they should pull out in some ways we are only there for helping during times of emergency in the ways that we are allowed to help. Now, um, also, we do not think that they should, uh, we do go to the government meetings. We never speak. Um, uh, uh, and we don't think that anyone should speak except for the human. But the Gurk Fikner people do speak. There are other alliances that do speak. See, we just have differing opinions on how to handle the situation. Hmm. I see. Um, thank you for that. And now I will actually ask my question. Um, I know that there is free energy. There is a way to tap into free energy that doesn't come from creating electricity or having any kind of that stuff. So uh, what I want to ask is, is it possible to create matter without using um, atoms from a, a one source to the other, the law of the equivalent exchange and uh, the mass? Um, of I course. We call it. Energy can be manipulated into matter and into, into light as well. That is what God did. God is pure energy but not just one kind of energy. He is massive different kinds of energies and putting energies together can create matter and light. So yes, there are ways to do that. And there will be a time on your planet coming up in the near future where Tesla will uh, appear uh, and give some information about how to use energy in an undying uh, way. I believe he's going to be able to uh, bring some information to the world about um, energy, matter, and understanding of futuristic ideas. And it will be allowed because he will not be in third dimension, but he will be talking from uh, the spirit realm. Okay, thank you very much. And nice to meet you, by the way. Very well, thank you. Thank you, and, and thank you very much. And Marlene has a question, and thank you for staying yes. with us, even though you just dropped in. Yes. Fog, hi. <laughs> yes. Um, can you uh, give us an overview of the cleanup that has been doing, uh, you, we have been doing on the planet, I'm talking about everybody involved, and all the galactics involved, with uh, your ground crew? Uh, maybe not go into detail at this point, but um, and, and well, a new review would be great for us to hear. Thank you. Okay. Yes, there has been efforts made to do some very important cleanup, especially in the Pacific Ocean, uh, Japan areas, also in the Siberian areas. There's some uh, very important cleanup there, and also. Um, in South America, there's an area where we have to do a great deal of cleanup as well. But they don't send ground crews in third dimension. The, the way that they are helping is in fourth and fifth dimensions, but they are sending um, energies to these areas. And uh, there are also species that are there on your planet 
that have been there for a long time under the Pacific Ocean, the clares, which are a, 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 a hybrid species that are affected by the radiations from Japan that are also helping uh, to clean up those, do clean up in those areas. Also, also the Agarthan peoples under some of the mountains in the Rocky Mountains and Mount Shasta, etc., are also doing their version of cleanups in the areas because they have been under the mountains for quite a long time. And they're sort of grandfathered in. They're allowed to be there since they were there before the law went into effect that no aliens were allowed to appear in the third dimension. But they're there, they've been there a long time, and so they and they have not bothered anyone in, in the sense that they have not uh, shown themselves. So the, the, govern, the galactic government said, okay, you can stay as long as you don't show yourself. So, but they have been, um, there was also the gold people of the Himalayas and all the different draconian species that are uh, in third and fourth and fifth dimensions under the planet, in, in the planet. So they are all working for cleanup because this is also their home. So yes, from outside the planet, extraterrestrial, yes, there is many that are working to help and sending energies and uh, cleaning up chemtrails and things of this nature and working on uh, reducing uh, radiation in the atmospheres and etc. because we are permitted to do that uh, because some of that was caused by aliens as well. So does that answer your question? It does. Where are we now in a percentage wise as far as the cleanup please? Oh, they're actually about and maybe 55 to 60 percent okay as Thank much you. as we're allowed to do we still have a ways to go as you see um thank you uh my other question is concerning the light quotient on the planet i understand that uh at one point this beautiful planet was more than 80 percent in darkness where are we now please well, that is a an interesting question because I did not know it when it was eighty percent in darkness. I will let me refer to someone here. Ah, I understand. All right, it is no longer eighty percent in darkness, but it is. They consider it to be much much lighter now. It, actually, it's it's. Yes. Oops. All right. It's out of the darkness in some respects. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And, but there is still some darkness that is still there. But to measure it is, is very difficult. But I would say it's still about... Mm, there's a lot of darkness that yes. you haven't seen. So there's a lot of darkness still there, though. What but can I you... you a percentage. Go ahead. I could not really give you a percentage. I would mm -hmm. have to look into that. Because it fluctuates, of course. Uh, yes. Because humans are unpredictable. Uh, what can you tell? What can you tell our audience right now, and those who are on front line, and everybody working to free up the planet? What can you tell us in regards to what we can, can we can concretely do to support you guys? Um, well, actually, more? the thing is, well, let me say this about that. First of all, there is a lot of localized. Um, things happening that are opening people up to understand who we are. Uh, so it is not coming in a worldwide way, but locally there are people seeing ships. There are locally uh, uh, understanding more about the alien communities that are around the earth. So disclosure is happening in smaller, more localized ways so that it becomes permanent. You see, 
a worldwide disclosure would not be a good thing because people would just disregard it. But locally, it's we're we're getting to the people locally. So, uh, what was the question again? I, I went off into what? something. Yes, oh. but your 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 explanations yeah. were very good and uh, and, and very directed. Um, no, my question was, what can we do? We we're talking yeah. about um, specifically do us of us of us on the front line be communicating with you uh, the ships and everything oh, else and everybody else as the collective uh, what said momentum can we create yes i said that for a reason and that was because those that now understand can be can actually tell their stories but the first the the very most important things that humans can do on the front line is be positive, be themselves, be an example of what the future holds and let people know if they want to know <coughs> what your vision of the future is as well. But the, they have to see your love, they have to see your commitment, they have to see your understanding. They cannot just... Um, you cannot just go out in the world and not show it and have the people change. But after a certain point with the work and missions that are being taken up by your people, um, many will start to understand. But let me tell you this also. There will be disasters and things that happen that will wake people up. And unfortunately, they have to happen so that people will be aware and take sides. Right now, a lot of people are just drifting through the world. They don't know what they believe. They don't know what to do. They just are in this third dimensional fog. Oh, that's my name. But anyway, um, I spell it differently. It's F-O-G-U-E. But and anyway, they they run around in a third dimensional mist they don't even see what is happening around them but they have to be awakened thank you for that um there's a question from krellick in the chat and he says it's a, it's a it's an extended question so i'll ask it he says um do galactic empires like the ones depicted in earth science fiction exist in real life and if so, do any of them exist in our galaxy? And then the follow-up question is, are there civilizations where scientists and engineers run the government instead of politicians? Yes, that would be the uh, that would be what the Illuminati wanted to do. They would want to run the governments with science and understandings and intellectual uh, uh, paralysis rather than pol uh, politics as normal. So yes. That's what they tried to do, and it has happened on other planets, absolutely. And yes, there are science fiction kind of places in the universe. Um, where do you think that some of your ideas have come from for science fiction? Some of your people like Gene Roddenberry were time travelers, and they, they had relics that could move them into the future and past. So yes, they saw things that uh were very real and are actually becoming part of your immediate future because those ideas were revealed and so yes there's very much a science fiction kind of world out there and they have technology far beyond yours that's that's uh, a no-brainer in some ways because you see that there are ships all around the planet where that's a higher technology than what you have. They move through wormholes. They move through dimensional shifting. They, they travel in so many different ways than you can possibly imagine. They do vibrational shift. They take vibrations from one place. They put them, they, they uh, capture these vibrations and they send them elsewhere and have them reappear. That's, a trans uh, a transporter but there's uh, ways to do it with light there's ways to do it by, by vibration 
so many ways to uh, show that they they have advanced technologically. There's the way even to do it chemically. So there are some species that live underwater and their transport machines are made with chemicals. They add chemicals to a an area of the water that is uh, contained and within that area those the, those chemicals uh, break down the, the uh, whatever it is and then they can actually re uh, rebuild them with finding the attachment to each portion of these the molecules of that chemical there you have it but it is well well advanced of course thank you okay go ahead. A question in here yes in relation to the talk about energy um i was interested in the things that affect your own personal energy i've been feeling for the past five days an extended period of very low energy and headaches and i'm wondering what kind of things cause these. well i i sense in you some depression so i believe depression can cause some of these things but the thing is your uh when things start moving more in your direction for positivity's sake you'll be out of that uh that you'll be out of that depression and you will feel more energy so energy has to do with the place that you're in you have to create some of your own energy sometimes. Yeah, you were talking about creating it. I'm wondering about that aspect. Yes, so you must uh, start to think more positively. The way you phrased the question was sort of negative. So you have to remember that you are you have to live in a positive realm and not a negative one. And living in negative realms brings you lower and lower and lower. Uh, trying to take yourself out of that will bring you higher and higher. But when you say your prayers, when you do your meditations, ask for the strength, ask for the removal of depression, ask for the removal of negativity, ask for greater help. Yeah, I didn't know that it was depressing because there are good things happening, but everything has been very extreme and challenging. Yes, it's been extremely challenging. So you have to understand that when situations are extremely challenging, you have to be extremely positive to overcome that. And that's not easy. And, but you can go places where you find positive energy. You can go places where things are different than uh, some scenarios that you live in might bring you down. And some, so you must escape from those situations that cause ne a depression and negativity and find a place that is different and changes your energy levels like here perhaps yes like here this changes your energy levels or find somewhere in the park that has a higher energy of uh, output or look for something in nature that's more positive or get in the light more often being in the light helps with your positive energy in many ways there's vitamins and minerals in the light but it's also a natural um, stimulant in many ways. Thank you. You're That's welcome. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. We have time for one more question. If We only have about three minutes left. Do you want to uh, go stay or do you want to take one more I'll question? I'll stay for three minutes. Okay. Um, the question, this is a kind of a nice question, but it says... Um, Firstborn is saying, what I don't get is that there's all kinds of sightings, but yet people can't, the galactic law says no one can interfere. He was like, he, he's confused by that. Well, they're not landing on the planet. <laughs> they're not really interfering with anything yeah. except your vision. They're allowed to do that as long as they don't appear in third dimension on the ground. They're not allowed to be on the surface of the planet. They can be in the sky. Right. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, they're not allowed to be on the planet. So do not be confused. They're doing what they can to create understanding. 
-hmm. they're letting you know hey we're here we're not uh taking over the planet we're not bombing you we're not doing anything negative we just want you to see that we're here we want you to know that we are on your side now we're not allowed to come to the planet but we are allowed to be seen in the sky okay thank you very much and then for the last question Liney just asked do you have a blessing or a message for the earth a message for the earth is to i want to keep as many of you on fire as possible for your missions because there have been some already that have just have died out because they they just couldn't stay positive enough or they were surrounded by so much negativity that it, they burned out and they can re reignite but i see that as a danger with many of you because um many of you the people around you are not supporting you very well or not in the same frame of mind as you are or many of these things so it is that uh it is that it, it's hard to maintain it just use the touch screen people are getting tired people are getting that's why sometimes it's difficult to keep focus well your it mission is difficult yes is your, isn't, isn't it so that your mission shouldn't be only about contact but your mission is about your impact in the world and that should be true whether or not there's any kind of contact or not mm -hmm. yes so getting tired is by having expectations of an event that may or may not come even in our own lifetime but we stay the course and we hold the light for people and we shine it and we shine our own light to help wake people up absolutely and that is what i want to tell you is that is so so important that you continue whatever you're doing and not i, I there was a couple questions earlier in the day about people getting tired waiting for their missions to actually happen but you can do so much in the meantime uh, by just being who you are, by just holding the light and bringing positivity to your little area. It's, it's still activity. It's still something that you have to do. You cannot get down about it. You cannot uh, give up. It has to be done. I think that's our time. Is there any closing blessings? I will let you go now so that he can do the interpretations. I can't do that. JD would like to do a closing blessing. Excellent. Let me go first. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. Hello. Fog Hello. went to see cryo. Yes. I like him. Thank you so much, uh, Jim. It's been amazing. I'm going to turn on my camera so you can see who's here. Welcome back, by the way. Wait. Wait. There. Look. Look at there. Hey. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm, 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 I'm really good. I'm here. Excellent. To Karen. You look great. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So he wanted to do a blessing. Excellent. Please do. Anybody else? Barbara? Anybody else? All right, JD and Barbara. And you didn't want to start, Jim, because you said that you wanted to do one before? Uh, well, I wanted to come back so uh, I could do the interpretation. Fog couldn't do it. Okay, perfect. So I will go. And All I want right. to thank everyone for... Uh, following your hearts, following the light, which is inside of you and your wonderful beings and you're wonderful to have an experience with. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Ruma Yishia Kushkasha Katushuma Kiasu Namaki Ura Aria Sushuaki Ananta Yankansashia One Kian Siawaruo Juwaki Kia wantu urkoshia. 
May the eternal light continue to shine upon you and may it lift you up in a way that is special and spectacular. May you be able to shine your light in a way that you never have before and become part of a greater existence. Much love. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead, Barbara. Bring all your concerns to the light. Make sure that they are seen and heard so that they can be answered and dealt with. Make sure that you are understanding that there is a positive outcome with all things and that a lesson to be learned is sometimes not easy, but will be a blessing in the future. Thank you. Was there anyone else in your room? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, let me just switch it back. So today is, let me just switch the camera back so I can... Uh, be on camera here. I think I already am. Um, just to tell everyone, uh, this has been the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. We meet every time, every week at the same time, which is uh, 11 a.m. EST or 5 p.m. Uh, GMT Amsterdam time. For two hours, we have a wonderful uh, sharing with our channels and our guests. And it's just a wonderful time to be together. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button at the bottom, we're trying to grow this Hukalo 2 channel as well as our Hukalo TV channel. And just remember on the 16th of August through the 21st, we have the third Ascension workshop. Go ahead. And, and also don't forget the book. It's now out on yes. audiobook. Mm. And you can get that on Amazon. And we wanted to let people know it's out on audiobook. So because I know that in the book there is some typographical errors and things of that nature, and you can avoid them if you get the if you buy the audiobook. So um, please do that and please do a review if if you um, if you have read it. So it's a wonderful even book. Even if it's good, bad, and different. Reviews are important to the audience. Mm -hmm. They let them know what you really think. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and once again, if you would like to be, this has been a paid webinar. If you would like to join our huge array of people, we have space for about 25 and people come in and go out. So there's always space for one more, but for $10 a month, also to help with operating uh, costs of Human Colony, you can join the Hukalo Club for $10 a month. And you can find that on hukalo.org forward slash join webinars. So please, uh, please consider it. Yes, and, rem and you said the workshop, so that's good. Um, we welcome, I think we have like 16 signed up now or 17. Mm. So it's actually 18, she said, so that's cool. We have room for, we still have room for a few more, so that's okay. cool. All right. Um, Coming we up welcome soon. you, and it's a great time of fellowship and friendship as well. You learn a lot, but you also make some new friends. I noticed that every workshop we have the same people come back over and over again because it is just a, a really lovely time to, to get together. And next so, time we're going to have it in Europe, so I can come. Oh, that would be fun. I'd love yes. to do that. Yeah. Um, and Karen, maybe you, you can come and a lot of other people. So, if you find a place for us to have it, we'll have a talk about it. There's millions of places to have it. All right, good. At yeah. Your house. yeah. <laughs> At your house, yeah, with the dogs and everything. Yeah, yeah. the dogs running through and the cat and everything. So okay. okay. And Much the cat. Love. Next week we've got Terry Rayner. She channels the Divine Realm. She's a beautiful, beautiful channeler. So um, be sure to tune in next week and then. After that, we've got you two weeks in a row, and one will be, the second week will be from, live from the Ascension Workshop. Yep. So then at the end of the month, we have Susie Byler, who channels uh, I love creators. her. She's so cool. She's yeah, so cool. she's great. So we, we have a big action-packed month of August. So thank you, everyone, and much love All to right, you. All right, very good. Much love to Thank you, everybody. Love you very much, and thanks for being here. Um, have a great day.
Have a great day. Thank you. Bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now.